Today I had some positive interactions with a few people who claimed to be in the realm of Christendom but didn't really claim a technical background. They simply said, I'm Protestant. The Protestant person who came to gently move in and pull in next to me to talk to me a couple minutes received the prayer, thanked me for the beautiful prayer as a pagan priest and technically a minister with two certificates, and openly went away from there having provided me some food to eat. My sadness is where I went to shop, I purchased bread, I purchased cheese to make some food for me, and found that both the bread was a little bit nigai, and so was the cheese. When I returned later in the day, I mentioned it to a man named Chris, who was sort of a young, very young, 20-something supervisor, and said, I think you might still be having problems with your cheese freezer, because I knew of the fact that that grocery store where I shopped lost a lot of cheese and I made a comment on that but now I really understand it. You see sometimes we have to reflect on what we don't know and then we give ourselves an opportunity to opinion and then we come back around once we get a little bit more data and information. What I can say about people today is many people are incredibly immoral today in front of the house of the Lord. If you have a faith of any kind you are very aware of what is and isn't moral in your mind. It doesn't mean that you are moral in front of the house of God. It also doesn't mean that your behavior is not federally illegal or internationally a treason of some kind. You see, as an American citizen, presuming you are that technically by your birthright, you are representatives of our nation in every right of our treaties. You see, you are liable as an American citizen for our international treaties and the one I talk about and spout about the most is human rights. Human rights says that we have human rights and we are equal and free. Human rights says you don't have the right to stalk me, hurt me, abuse me, sex me, or do things to me that I have not had a chance ever to say yes or no to. There are people who use the term sexology incredibly illegally and highly immorally before God. The presumption is God does not make these things right there that is blasphemy in the words of the Lord. Every human being is a holy person. Every soul is belonging to God. People either choose to follow their version of God or they choose to fall away to selfish beliefs that they are interpreting the Lord their way. Does that make sense? Is this day's ministry, as this day's sermon goes, I want to make sure people understand the difference between me as a pagan and possibly the difference between other pagans because I'm just a single pagan priest. I am in an order that is my calling. I am not in a pagan priesthood or of any kind internationally at this time. I do, however, highly regard what used to be posted online of the International Pagan Federation's principles. There were seven that I agreed with in fullness of time. Mainly, those principles talk about the regard for human beings and their rights under the federal laws of most nations around the world to choose their faith. That is a human rights article of the Declaration of Human Rights. It is also a protected amendment under the First Amendment of American citizenship for our Constitution which means I have the right to practice my faith or pursue my faith through freedom of religion. At no time do you have the right to tell me that I don't have the right to do that, nor do you have the right to presume that I'm lying to you about that. At no time do you have the right to enter into my faith practices according to both treaties and both constitutional amendments. Does that make sense? So for you, you have the same opportunity presuming that you are a citizen of one of the 400 nations plus, probably at this time, allegedly, as I've learned online, unless I got the number wrong, and I am a little numerically challenged, but it's what I read through a pretty reputable source of those nations. If you are a member or citizen of other nations, and you are here as a guest in our country, then you have the obligations of your country to follow as a traveler and a world representative of your city or of your place, of, of your country, of your nation, but at the same time you are required 
by American law and the purpose of your being here to follow American laws. You are not exempt from our laws. You are not privileged to not be a part of our laws, even though it might be possible that if you are a person of a leadership or what do they call a diplomatic endeavor for our country, you might have some diplomacy capabilities or privileges and I forget what that's called. But many people who come here in the name of their prince or princesses, kings or queens, have occasionally been abusive to Americans here and have lucked out and gotten out of it. But most travelers, most students, most business people that come here to do business with America Inc. or university colleges do not have those privileges to abate the law. Abating the law means you think you're above the law, it means you think you don't have to follow the law, and it means you think you can do anything you feel like in your ideas about what you feel are your privileges or your rights over yourself or someone else, and that is a lie you've told yourself.